All right, let's finish the return of the Obradin. Um, kind of think <coughs> since we're leaving here now, this might be a good place to like copy the file here. Copy number one to number two empty. Now we can continue the first one. So we were almost through. Sorry, I and the last time I just got too tired and noticed I was I barely wasn't talking anymore. I was just playing the game basically. So I kind of had to stop there. Even though I would have preferred to do it like in one swoop. Um, anyway, but now we're doing it. Some cags here. Um, yeah, we've seen this, but. The surgeon isn't here. He was here, so... Hmm, what about this? What chapter is this? This cape. Uh, let's check on the scene one final time. Oh. Uh, yeah, we need to get out here first. So the surgeon seems to be okay, just a normal dude with a magical pocket watch and some knowledge he doesn't want to give away yet, some secrets. Carrying something there? Kind of not a sign of a pocket watch here, right? He's not holding anything in his hand there. I don't think so. What is she holding there, by the way? If anything. Sometimes, it, sometimes it's better to just see the silhouette cause the pixel pixelated stuff there kind of confuses things a bit man it's her other arm one mm, don't, don't think it's anything important there that she's holding one of them has to have a gun here on board because she later shoots the man here anything else we need to know here yeah guess they're down here right? It's the force mate. They want they wanna leave. It's more like a non he's more like not for non violent mutiny, I suppose. He just wants to leave. This guy not so much, I think. Just a window. Nothing interesting behind the curtain. Oh, that's a shame. 
Oh well, I have a feeling like if we miss something, it will be something like this, like a hidden secret or so. That if you look at uh, a certain scene from a certain angle, it will it will reveal something. I don't think we're missing anything obvious anymore at this point. Uh, and of course, for this to work, you have to get the relationships and the motivations of the people right. <laughs> Suddenly, she has a gun from somewhere. That's a surgeon. What's he doing though? Why is he so blurry? Almost looks like he's a victim there himself. No, he he's sharp again here, right? Hand to his head, he's shielding his ears and eyes from the gunshot, I guess. He's cowering. He's coming up. Yeah, he's more the violent type. And he's like, Ugh, this is horrible. I, don't want, I just want to get out of here. Look at his pose. He just got up. He's not like super aggressive. Guys, below deck. Are there even any important people here? Yeah, he's still here. Lanka is still here, and that guy's still there. That's a forced mate. Oh, wait a minute. He's now fighting him? They were just sitting next to each other here. Okay, so they're on different sides now. That's Lanka dying. That's that guy. Okay. Let's just go in there. I'm sure there will be people that we want to know what happened to them. Lenka. Davis, yeah, getting near the end now. That's Davis getting clubbed. Let's go to the club. Um, that's Lanka dying. Just trying to get into a cabin or even his cabin. Midshipman. Yeah, pretty much. 
He's trying to crawl back into his room. That seems kind of safe. John Davis <laughs> clubbed to this. Thomas Lanke. These guys. Yeah, it's in his cabin where he's dying. It is kind of confusing to see. They are sometimes on opposing sides. Like, he's like one of the guys against the captain. And he's fighting for the captain. But he's still helping him. It's kind of weird. They have some books here in the midshipman cabin. But Brandon is busy killing people. Hmm. He's like, eh, what does he want? Or is he like trying to listen to something? The sound of the waves. He's coming down there. Like, ready to fight I suppose cracked window <laughs> hmm then they disappear yeah I guess we've been through this Plenty of times now. We don't need to do this. Alright, let's leave the ship then. Right. Is there a treasure here? The shell hidden in a bunker bed. And who are we? Are we just a random no name dude? Why did we get this uh, task handed to us? Let's look down in the, at the boat. Can't tell this who this guy is either. He has like stripes. Um, a f soldiers like striped shirt, I guess. So Walkoff had one, but the stripes were a little different. Vertical, horizontal. It's flipped. He, the Frenchman, had stripes, but they were a little smaller and narrower. Stripe uh, pants, I guess. I don't think it's one of these guys, right? Also just a random dude. Okay. We're done. Squeak, squeak. Hey buddy. <coughs> a storm. So this means um if we just stay in here the the clock starts taking um, storm that means it could be related to the control weather control of that thing right he's not looking up it's hard to see his back uh, his face I mean that's some run random lug luggage and that's where the watch was inside okay let's go then See ya, Obradin. Finally. <laughs> Indeed. So you don't fall out. <laughs> mm. 
We must have investigated that boat for days. Storm's coming up. One week later. Okay. So we're in Africa now. D? What does, does the blinking D mean? The Honorable East India Company. Insurance assessment for the good ship Oberdin. Victim of calamitous events at sea. Insurance assessment. So where are I, an insurance guy? Prepared by the company of investigation. Wow, one out of 23 pages. Ship. Damaged in Squall Atlantic. Sunk in storm. Falmouth. Payout claimed 20 pounds. 20,000 pounds. Cargo company. All cargo lost. Payout claimed 5,000 pounds. Cargo crown. All cargo lost. Payout claimed for restitution 3,000 pounds. Captain Robert Witterett. Fate, suicide, gun, criminal findings, murder of crewmate four, <laughs> damn, the state fortified to the crowd, oh damn it, ah, sorry, William Hoskett, first mate, fate, shot, gun, R. Wittert, criminal findings, attempted mutiny, the state fined 25 pounds. <laughs> That's weird. Hang on a second. Oh, my nose is running. Edward Nichols, second mate. Fate, shotgun, C10. Criminal findings, murder of crewmate, 2. Attempted mutiny. Theft of cargo. Estate fined 100 pounds. Martin Perot, third mate. Fate unknown. Findings of merit. Extraordinary valor. I can support that, I guess. Exceptional performance of duties. Estate awarded outstanding wages and reward. 90 pounds. John Davis. Force mate, fate clubbed, H. Brennan, criminal findings, murder of crewmate one, estate fined, 15 pound. Man, my nose. <laughs> Alfred Clester, boson, fate torn apart, beast, findings of merit, exceptional performance of duties. The state awarded outstanding wages and reward. 70 pounds. Charles Minet, Bosun's mate. Fate torn apart, beast. Criminal findings, murder of crewmate. State one. The state unknown. Expense claimed 15 pounds. Henry Evans, surgeon. Fate alive, Africa. Findings of demerit, abandonment of crew and vessel. The state awarded outstanding wages, 50 pounds. Oh, that's interesting. So they're kind of pissed that uh, they ab abandoned the ship there. Of abandonment of crew and vessel. James Wallace, surgeon's mate. Fate clawed, findings of merit, extraordinary valor, the state awarded outstanding wages and reward 50 pounds. Winston Smith, carpenter, fate speared 
Beast, Findings of Merit, Extraordinary Valor, the State Awarded Outstanding Wages and Rewards, 60 pounds. I wonder how they kind of set those uh, rewards. Why does one get like 60 and the other, uh, the next guy 50 for Extraordinary Valor? How do they differentiate between them? I don't know. Hmm. Just by my descriptions of the events, I guess. <coughs> Marcus Gibbs, Carpenter's mate, fate spiked, estate unknown, outstanding wages donated to pension fund, thirty pounds. So we get a little more of the of the background of some of the characters here. Estate unknown. Thomas Sefton, Cook. Fate struck by a tail. The state awarded outstanding wages forty pounds. Emil O'Farrell, butcher. Fate spiked. Findings of merits. <clears throat> oh, there's a difference. They are all exceptional, but sometimes it's about valor, and sometimes it's about exceptional performance of duties. The state of, and those are a bit lower. State awarded outstanding wages and reward, 40 pounds. Christian Wolf, Gunner. Fate, Shot, Cannon, Beast. Findings of Merit, Exceptional Performance of Duties. State awarded outstanding wages and reward, 70 pounds. This is higher now. But on the other hand, he's not just a regular uh, crew member. He's a bit... Uh, he has a higher position, a higher quality, like they said on the uh, in the crew manifest, in the manifest, I mean. Olus Wieter, gun is made, fate, shot, gun. Yeah, a lot of the rewards seem to be connected to the position they're holding. Not necessarily the deeds that they do, did. All those, because it is also, they are also outstanding wages, of course. Uh, Wyatt Gunner's made Fate Shot Gun, Jay Davis, Criminal Findings, Murder of Crewmate 1. Just one? Feels like he did much more. Attempted Mutiny, uh, State Fine, 50 pounds. <laughs> Ah, yeah, man. Sorry. <coughs> Duncan McKay, purser. Fate, drowned, beast. Findings of demerit. Abandonment of crew and vessel. Estate awarded outstanding wages, 50 pounds. Finley Dalton, Hamsman. <coughs> Fate, torn apart, beast. State awarded outstanding wages, 30 pounds. Oh, nothing special, just out outstanding wages. Even though he got torn apart. That's not much. Edward Spratt, artist. Fate, crushed beast. State awarded outstanding wages, 50 pounds. Abigail Hoskart, Witterate. Passenger. Fate crushed rigging. No claim made. Hmm, interesting. Nuncio Pasqua. Passenger. Fate knifed. E. Nichols. No claim made. Emily Jackson. Passenger. Fate alive. Africa. Criminal findings. Murder of crewmate. Findings of demerit. Abandonment of crew and vessel. State fine. 35 pounds. Miss Jane Bird, passenger. Fade Alive Africa, same here. I uh, know she's actually fine more because of sh because she shot one. Findings of demerit, abandonment of crew and vessel, the state fine 10 pounds. That's pretty decent considering all that happened. She's getting off pretty well and she is still alive. So that she she got that going for it, for her. Bowden Lan Lim, passenger, fate strangled beast, no claim made. 
It Bangs the R. Passenger, Fate Burned. Criminal Findings, Murder of Crewmate 1. State Unknown, Expense Claimed, 25 Pounds. Chish Tan, Passenger. F Fate, oh, does it say Chio Tan? Fate Spike, Criminal Findings. Um, Murder of Crewmate. State unknown. Expense claim 25 pounds. Hoxeng Lao. Passenger. Fate shotgun. H. Brennan. No claim made. Zugizati. Ship steward. Fate shotgun. C minor. Mine. The state awarded outstanding wages. 35 pounds. <clears throat> oh, this will be interesting. Philip Dahl. Captain Stewart. <laughs> Fate unknown. Criminal findings, murder of crewmate one, findings of demerit, failure to perform duties, estate fines 35 pounds. <laughs> Paul Moss, first mate steward, fate killed sword, Al Volkov. Findings of merit, exceptional performance of duties, <laughs> estate awarded outstanding wages and reward 45 pounds. Samuel Galligan, second mate steward, fate knifed, ECR. Criminal findings, attempted mutiny, theft of cargo, state find. Theft of cargo, those are all the chapter 4 guys that try to run away with the treasure. 50 pounds. <coughs> Roderick Anderson. Third main steward. Fate crashed, crushed cannon. The state awarded outstanding wages 10 pounds. Well, that's not much. I don't know what the actual worth is at that time. What you can buy for 10 pounds. But doesn't sound like much. Davy James. Fourth main steward. Fate alive Africa. Findings of demerit, abandonment of crew and vessel, no claim made. Oh, so he comes out even. Pays off being a chicken. Uh, Peter Milroy, midshipman, fate exploded. Findings of merit, extraordinary valor. State awarded outstanding wages and reward, 40 pounds. Thomas Lanke, midshipman. Knifed or whiter, state awarded outstanding wages 30 pounds. Sa Charles Hirschdick, midshipman, fate burned. Claim, uh, findings of merit, extraordinary valor, exceptional performance of duties, the state awarded outstanding wages and reward 50 pounds. Omid Gould, topman, fate drowned beast. Findings of merit, exceptional performance of duties, the state awarded outstanding wages and reward, 35 pounds. Timothy Butman, Chopman, fate shotgun in Nichols, findings of merit, extraordinary valor, state awarded outstanding wages and reward, 35 pounds. Huang Li, <coughs> Topman. Fate electrocuted. Findings of merit, exceptional performance of duties. Estate awarded outstanding wages and reward. 35 pounds. <laughs> Can we like press something here now? Ji Zhang, Topman. Fate Claude. <laughs> Findings of merit, extraordinary valor. Estate awarded outstanding wages and reward. 35 pounds. Li Hong, top man. Fate, speared beast. Criminal findings, attempted mutiny. Theft of cargo, state fined. 50 pounds. That's the uh, chapter 4 guy. Wei Li, top man. Fate, torn apart, beast. Findings of merit, extraordinary valor. Exceptional performance of duties. State awarded outstanding wages and reward. 45 pounds. 
Nicholas Botterell, Topman, Fate, Spirit, Beast, State Awarded, Outstanding Wages, 25 pounds. Maba, Topman, Fate, Torn Apart, Beast, Findings of Merit, Extraordinary Valor, Exceptional Performance of Duty. So he has both. A state unknown. Outstanding wages and reward donated to pension fund. Luce Walker, Topman. Fate, clubbed, are witted. Criminal findings, attempted mutiny. State fined, 25 pounds. A lot of mutiny there in the end. Leonid Volkov, Topman. Fate, shotgun, E. Jackson. Criminal findings, murder of crewmate one. State unknown, expense claim, 20, uh, 15 pounds. Ala Kuznikishin, seaman. Fate, drowned beast. Criminal findings, attempted mutiny. Theft of cargo, state unknown, expense claimed, 50 pounds. Alexei Toporov, seaman. Fate, drowned beast. Criminal findings, attempted mutiny, theft of cargo, Estate unknown, expense claimed 50. Oh, there were two Russians there in that uh, calling of the sea, the calling chapter. Really? Mm, yeah, I guess. Nathan Peters, fate, drowned beast. Criminal findings, murder of crewmate one. Findings of demerit, abandonment of crew in the vessel. Estate fine, 25 pounds. Lars Linde, seaman. Fate clubbed and Peters. Estate awarded outstanding wages, 15 pounds. John Naples, fate killed sword. F. Dahl, findings of merit, exceptional performance of duties. Estate awarded outstanding wages and rewards, 25 pounds. Ren Fred Rajab, Seaman, Fate Illness, State Unknown, Outstanding Wages Donated to Pension Fund, 15 pounds. Abraham Akbar, Seaman, Fate Crushed Beast, Findings of Merit, Exceptional Performance of Duties, State Awarded Outstanding Wages and Reward, 25 pounds. William Wazim, Seaman, Fate Crushed Cargo, Findings of merit, exceptional performance of duties, state awarded, outstanding wages and reward, 25 pounds. Solomon Side, seaman, fate illness, state awarded, outstanding wages, 15 pounds. Hamadou Dion, seaman, fate spiked. Findings of merit, exceptional performance of duties. Doesn't this like, um, all feel like raw? I mean, Bureaucratic speech is all, almost, almost always like rough and in a way almost cruel, or at least a bit detached and maybe a, a touch inhumane or something. There's something that speaks out of this, this, this document here to me that is like a certain cruelty, uh, uh, they being like super neutral. It's almost a bit too much. It's like really cold, you know. You you can barely you can, or at least I can, like really imagine, like if they they some um, representatives of the company going to the families and go, ah, here, got a bad news for you. Uh, your husband is dead. Here you got twenty five pounds. See ya. Bye bye. Something like this, they just, uh, they're gone. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is the four, uh, lines are all that the people get in the end for their whole life and the whole years, maybe in some cases, like 20 years of work on that ship. And that's how, how they end up, right? Yeah, but, but I cannot tell. Maybe this is the the, the sums are like almost a, a small fortune 
Hard to tell for me at the moment. I don't know the, the, how strong the currency was at that time. Um, exceptional performance of duties, a state unknown, outstanding wages and reward donated to pension fund 25 pounds. Henry Brennan, seaman, fate, knifed, are wittered, uh, witterell, criminal findings, murder of crewmate one, attempted mutiny, stated find, the state find 50 pounds. I mean, and also the punishment compared to the rewards feel kind of strange, you know. Someone does a mutiny and, um, I don't know, these, these numbers feel uh, wrong somehow. <coughs> Alexander Booth, Seaman. Fate, Drowned, Beast. Findings of demerit, abandonment of crew and vessel. The state awarded outstanding wages, five pounds. Patrick O'Hagan, Seaman. Fate, Speared Beast, Criminal Findings, Attempted Mutiny, Theft of Cargo, Estate Find, 50 pounds. George Shirley, Seaman, Fate Shot, Cannon Beast, Findings of Merit, Extraordinary Valor, Estate Awarded Outstanding wage Wages and Reward, 25 pounds. Samuel Peter, Seaman, Fate Crushed Cargo, the state awarded outstanding wages 15 pounds. Where is the uh, stowaway, by the way? It's not mentioned there. A preliminary draft of this assessment has been approved by the Royal Trade Guarantor. Total claimed 29,285 pounds. On behalf of the Honorable East India Company, I certify all statements as accurate and declare this matter closed in its entirety. H E I C Chief Inspector. Okay. That's her name. Ah. Oh. Robert Randolph. The pocket watch remains in your possession. How come? The book returns to its original owner, Henry Evans in Morocco, as requested. And now... One year later. Ooh, we are in a room. <coughs> ten past ten, night time. I cannot zoom. We're glued to our chair. Who's this old lady? She's in the kitchen if you need more. This sounds British. Oh, we cannot move. We are a prisoner in our own room. Let's look around. Child's on the ceiling. Got a nice fire. Go on. Storm outside, of course, like always. Probably because there's some treasure in there. The creatures of the sea are crawling on land to get to us. Londres. Is that French for London? Morocco. Morocco, I suppose.
Chief Inspector. Oh, Jane Bird. That's interesting. I have write to you with the unfortunate news that Dr. Evans has passed away. He succumbed to his illness shortly after receiving your package. How convenient. He was very pleased with your correspondence. So that also means the whole group that ran away, they kept contact at least, or maybe they even at the same place. Which is kind of weird because uh, they weren't connected when the voyage started. The women were like passengers. One was a steward and one was, um, well, the surgeon. So they don't necessarily should be staying all like, should all be staying in Morocco. They had like over a year to move back to their home place. So that's kind of odd. He was very pleased with your correspondence and asked that his gratitude be expressed by returning the book to you, along with the means to complete it. As for the three of us that remain, the Oberdin, uh, that remain, the Oberdin is a distant memory and a dreadful chapter in our lives that we wish to forget. Do not write back. Regards, Shane Bird. No, that's nice. Okay, we got different stuff here. The book, a letter, and a bundle of joy. Hmm. Okay. That's all, huh? Yeah. Letter, we got that. Let's open the shell here. I know that's the shell. Come on. Oh, are you kidding? What the hell? That's a claw! That's a hand of one of the mermaids. That's why it smells like this. Ooh, I see. We can indeed, we can visit the memory of that creature now. Wow, that's cool. That's pretty amazing. Let's have a look at the book again quickly. This tale belongs to you now. Please finish it. H-E. So we got a book back. Any more entries here? Probably just at the bargain chapter, right? Well, I don't expect there to be anything else. But, um... <clears throat> oh, this is missing now. This is empty. Oh, we cannot start. We need the hand to start. <laughs> That's funny. You know, I was wondering, since there were like dead corpses of the crab riders, why we didn't use the pocket watch on them? On the crabs. You know. If we can use it on the mermaid now. <laughs> so. It's, it was her who wrote us. Shane Bird. Henry Evans is not alive anymore. Yeah, this is open now. Okay, let's do it then. Time of death? We don't know. Clock is spinning. <laughs> and we start out with a death. That's a surgeon. That's the treasure chest. That's Philip Dahl. And who are you shooting? Jesus, it's the, the little... Wow, they're way smaller than I thought. 
It's the monkey. I'm telling you. It's all about the monkey. Who are you, though? No, I don't want to go yet. Oh, it's a monkey's paw! <laughs> Holy crap. A friendly but not entirely pleasant monkey companion was sacrificed in the pursuit of knowledge. I knew it. He was behind it, behind it all. <laughs> there you are. Huh. In the leather rat. So this is part five. Location of the corpse. The monkey is lying there. Two others were present. The surgeon. Paul Moss. So, Philip Dahl is already dead here? Must be. So we can travel through his corpse. Oh, and he's, oh, he's dead as well. Yeah, we kind of knew that that would happen, right? This, that those two guys would be dead. So now we have our first uh, victim that was not on our list, and that would be the monkey. And that? What is that? What's stowed away down there? Is it like water? No, that wouldn't make any sense, right? There can't be just a hole at the bottom of the ship. There's a mug. He's bleeding? Oh, that's it. No, that blood is not coming from the monkey. It's coming from... Da... What? Does he hold there in his hand? Hard to tell. Well, he has spikes in him. So that must have been the mermaid, I suppose. And he's holding that monkey on a leash. That monkey apparently performed a duty for him here, like getting the key or something. There you are, collect your things. We, there's the key to that door, gone. Damn, that's not time we need to go, right. And you go, what are you up to? Nothing good. Who? Who's talking to whom? Oh, these two. Let's see. Paul Moss, killed by Volkov. On whose side were you? On the captain's side? Hmm, bargain part five. Yeah, he was trying to... Oh, was he? Yeah, I think he was trying to stop them. But we cannot enter this memory anymore, right? Or can we? We need to get out of here somehow. Hoist it out. 
To the main deck. Throw it over. Lock the door when, when you leave. Get the tail, boy. Yeah, that's never going to work. What are those? Shackles? Has he been chained? No, not him. Ah, I see. So they're giving the mermaid the shell back and apparently she lets them carry her without a fight. Who well, are those two guys involved in this? Oh, it's a steward. The captain didn't toss all the shells, so, but he meant to. And he did toss a lot of them, apparently. Met an unknown fate. Did he? So we can change this now. Um, spiked lateral release. Accessible only through another corpse. Ah, two other people present. David James, Paul Moss, first mate steward. The guy who later Leads the mutiny, basically. The third shell. Captain didn't toss them all. Leave it. Leave it, says the dead guy. Help me lift this. Stop. Wait. We're to set you free, talking to the mermaid, as if uh, she would understand them. Give it the shell, huh? Do it. Hoist it out to the main deck. Throw it over. Lock the door when you leave. Get the tail boy. In return, the ship, though, but didn't see it home. Okay, he's caring for the rest of the crew and passengers. <clears throat> All for the ship, the ship in general. I'm still not getting all this. This is like a swirling thing going on there suddenly. How is that possible? And what kind of substance is that in there? Is that maybe fresh water? Hard to say. Um. Look how she's glowing, pulsating even. What? There's something in there. Another mermaid, right? Always oh, threatening them. <laughs> Holy crap! He's a mean guy. Well, that's a tactic. What kind of... what is chained? What the hell is this? Is that just a head on top of the chain? The music is different, by the way. Still swirling. He's holding a shell now. Philip Dahl. I gotta get the order right now. This is part three. Captured beast fought against its jailer. Must be it for the trouble. 
So we got another death, which is one of the mermaids. So this is part four. And this is part five. So we only need two more. And one is Philip Dahl and the other one. Hmm, hard to say. So wait a minute, this happens before this. Is that his hat here? Not sure what it is that is supposed to be. It looks like a hat, right? Yeah, that's the captain's hat actually, I think. Yep. Maybe there's something underneath it. Okay, he's that's a pretty desperate attempt, by the way. He cannot assume that they understand his language or even the sounds he's making, judging by the screeching they use to communicate with each other. Hmm, where are they? At the bottom of the sea. That's the lie. And she, he kills another one of them. There's still a rider left. <laughs> that sound is terrifying. She's grabbing for his leg. So he pretty much does this all this on his own. I don't even know if someone's watching. I must check the memories before and take a closer look at the windows here. Yeah. We're so stuck in here, man. Not too much to explore here. Yeah. <clears throat> Part 2. One other person was present? Who would that be? Oh, of course, yeah. One other person besides the mermaid. An unholy creature. The first time that the book is using the word unholy creatures, defiant shrieks were greeted with a fatal bullet. Call it off, damn you. This is your kraken. You brought it here. Send it back. I'll kill every last one of you monsters. Restore the Kraken or I will kill you all. And now the third shell got the, uh, like a pause in there. And these guys are here suddenly. Third shell, Captain didn't toss them all. So at this point he must have decided to like throw them out all out. And must have accidentally left one there. Leave it. And well, they're actually trying to be nice to the sea creatures. Try, trying to set them free. Lock the door when you leave. Get the tail. And here, there you are. Collect your things. We, that's when they are fleeing. They want to go to the boat. There's the key to that door gone. Damn, there's no time we need to go. So one of them is still kind of interested in what's in here. The treasure. Right, in you go. What are you up to? Nothing good. Hmm. Who wants a key to the door? Okay, this must be the first thing that happens then. <laughs> What's this? Quicksilver. Quicksilver.
Herming Goods. Lord, my God, or Mr. My God, kind of. Quixel. Uh, yeah, it is kind of an a chemical ingredient, I guess. So it is a bit connected to uh, magic. But in real life, it doesn't have those properties. <laughs> Met an unknown fate. So we only have two deaths where we can, like, put something in. That's Philip Doll. That also means that some deaths, uh, causes of deaths, won't be used at all. Like, decapitated. It just doesn't happen. It's more like of a distraction. Ah, we can leave here. Interesting. So, if we would have gone one year ago, if we would have gone through that door, the shell would still have been down here? Huh. The mermaids are still alive and well in there, swimming, apparently. Yeah, he burnt his hand, just like uh, the Formosian dude did. Hmm. Yeah, he's tied to the floor here, yeah. right next to the treasure chest, how convenient. These shackles, those chains, and open. Hmm. What's this? Quicksilver? Oh my god. God in heaven. Oh, but done. <laughs> well done. All fates are correct. Hmm, okay. The end? It's still letting me stay inside the book. Ah, good old memories. This tale belongs to you now. Please finish it. Just like this watch belongs to me now. We're still here. Guess we need to leave. We cannot travel back to the other bodies anyways. And then that is kind of forced as well, because we started with the last buddy. So let's just leave. Whoa. Where are we going? I'm not controlling this. See a little bug. Oh, brother! The end. Nice, good job, Lucas Pope. For your dad, Caleb Pope, family, Taiwanese language consulting. Alright, I like this game, I really do.
But I kind of gotta say, I expected a little more from that last chapter. That was kind of, I don't know, anticlimactic, I guess. It was more like a Easter egg kind of thing. Chinese simplified localization. Hmm. I mean, what did we learn there? He killed the monkey and sent us the paw? Oh, Townsend. Okay, a lot of uh, different voice actors here. I think everyone had a little part at least, like one or two sentences, right? Most of them at least. Yeah. He did two of them. Yeah, so what about that monkey? Why did he kill his own monkey? Hmm. I mean, of course, because the monkey was behind it all. Was the evil mastermind, I know, but still. He explicitly said it like it's a sacrifice I have to make so that uh, people can use a pocket watch to get to that room. So that also means that the doc at this point while he was on board already had the pocket watch and knew how to use it right which is even stranger like I said this pocket watch is way more powerful than all those shells that really didn't get explained much in the end A lot of language consultings, consultants, extra things. Thanks, yeah, you're welcome. 2018. Okay, what happens if we like click on this again? Continue. Where will where will it continue? Uh, this place again. Hmm. I write to you as the unfortunate news has passed away. Very well, pleased with your correspondence and asset as gratitude be expressed by returning the book to you along with the means to complete it. As for the three of us, we don't want anything to do with you. Okay, later. Um, yeah. Is there a letter coming with that monkey paw? Where does he speak about this? Belongs to you now, please finish it. Um, why does it say, yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense calling this chapter the bargain. Hmm. Okay, like, yeah, I kind of want to jump into this again. I'm not satisfied yet. Time of death doesn't say much. What? What's happening here? I'm not doing anything. Hmm. 
Oh, he just puts it it's back? Wow, huh? I don't get it. So now we get the end without the whole bargain chapter? What what uh, is the difference? Is there a way to like not get the monkey's paw or something? Ha, huh, that's weird. Oh, that's really strange. Hmm. Now I'm even more confused. I mean, let's uh, we can say say for certain that uh, the pocket watch does not really get explained, just as the uh, magic properties of um, the shells don't get explained. They just go, ah, oh, here's a little Quicksilver, magic, alchemy, blah, blah, blah. That's not a real explanation, so. What kind of surgeon is that? That has a watch that can go back into people's memories. So we can click this away. So, they are kind of like two different endings. But... Wow, uh, why, ooh, well, I don't know, <laughs> I don't get it, it's, how could the, could, why would the monkey's hand not be there, can you maybe complete the book without uh, solving the disappearances, maybe that's why we don't get, that's when you don't get the hand and it will end like this? Huh, I'm not sure. I think I'll watch a few other Let's Plays. Well, not a few, but maybe one or two. Um, and look a few things up about the game. And um, if there's like a whole thing that I missed, like a whole theme, I might add another video, a short one. And if there's only like minor things, I might just comment on it like in the commentary section mm, yeah so what can we say as a final resume um, yeah first of all I like the game I really did I like the atmosphere I like even all this the pixelated graphics monochrome colors and um, the whole thing, I liked it a lot. Though it does get old a bit after a while, but not like fast. It's like just at the end I was like more like trying to get to all the places faster and it was tiny bit annoying moving from buddy to buddy and all that. But like most of the time and I also like wanted to be like pretty sorrow I gotta admit that as well so if I would have just oh the music is a bit driven now uh, if I would have just um, played through the game like normally like casually that would not necessarily have been an issue Do -do -do. Um, so hmm yeah, come. I must go in here again and understand the chapters. Part five of five. Okay, so I assume Paul Moss is, uh, let me see where they are from, uh, the surgeon is from England, and 
Paul Moss is from Wales. I guess he could have a, have a bit of an accent. So, um, let me see. Oh, this is already filled now? Because we did it once, maybe? Um, what's the text? So, the steward is looking for the surgeon, I suppose, and saying, there you are, collect your things. We are going and running away uh, and neglecting our duties, leaving the vessel, and so on. But the surgeon wants to get in here. He says, where's the key? To that door? Gone. And then he says, damn. So what, what's the reasoning behind his desire to get in here? Is that the surgeon wants to get in there? I mean, I doubt that he wants to, like, free the mermaids. And the shells have been thrown overboard. Like, that's what they assume, I think, right? So what... Why does he want to get in there? I guess he wants to investigate the chest or something? He's like a curious character. He's, a, he's very curious, right? He wants to know how everything works and so on. He, uh, I remember when they first got caught those uh, mermaids and brought them on, on deck, he was like staring at the mermaid, so he's that's like a biological interest. Uh, it's of interest for him because it's like a matter of biology, biology, and it's not that far off from medicine and yeah, being a surgeon, I guess. Okay, so he says, "There's no time. We need to go." Right in you go. So he agrees. He's not like super, super greedy, but he has prepared, he has a plan. And that's when he sends in the little monkey to, um, help him, at least in the memories, get behind that door. Maybe he just wants to find out how those guys died and what happened to them. What are you up to? And then he says, nothing good. Nothing good because he's sacrificing the monkey, I think. All right. So here comes part four. Can we just access part one? No, 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 that's the wrong way to do it. You need to go from end to start. I'm finished to start. So there's always the buddy there to to jump. <clears throat> so now get to see Martin Perot die. Hmm. The surgeon is not here. That's Paul Moss. Uh, where is he? Yeah, that's Paul Moss. So, it could be great. No. No, can't be. Yeah.
so I'm not sure how much Paul Moss would have told told the surgeon. He could assume that there's a shell left, but more likely not because these two guys already think that all shells were tossed out. Um, he forgot just that one that he was holding, probably. But now he's giving the shell willingly to the mermaid and then tosses her out with the shell, we can assume. First he says, leave it, showing that he has no intention of grabbing it. Uh, we're set to free in order to convince the mermaid they're giving her the shell. So there are no more shells to be found in here. I think it's fair to assume that that's the dog's, uh, the surgeon's level of information as well. Throw it over, lock the door when you leave. Why does he want to lock the door, though? Uh, maybe w the one crab rider did die, and they, I don't know, throw, throw it overboard. Because that in that run room here, very close to us, uh, or on the other side, um, this, that one crab, uh, that is like all tied up without a rider. So, I don't know. Man, there are like spears or spikes in that wall. Oh, maybe he was standing here. Yeah. It was like blah, 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 blah. Come on. And then she spiked him. That's why the blood is here and two more spikes that didn't hit him. But if, man, that's he ate quite a lot of those. Like three. He got hit pretty badly. Hmm. So what's the third corp third corpse? That one. Hmm, the captain's trying to intimidate them. He's alone. The crates here are not opened yet. So, he can reach deep enough with that spear. Um to actually kill them, so whatever is down there, it's not that deep. Mm, that's a creature. And that's the next creature. Yeah, that's the shape of a mermaid again. So they had three mermaids, they're killing two now. This is your Kraken! You brought it here! Send it back! Or maybe the crab rider is still down there. Still alive. Who knows? Maybe everybody just forgot about him. Even the creator. Even the developer of the game. First he's shooting them, and then he's uh, using a spear. Well, that's basically a repetition of the scene before, right? There's much difference in there. Why did they make like two scenes out of this? Huh. 
Hmm. I don't know. Could have... Could have been told in one scene, I guess. I'm not sure if this plays a role. Um, so, by the way, the whole thing still takes place in the leather red. I don't know why it said, like, only on part 5 before in the circle, leather red. It's not like it's shifting places. It's shifting the scene. It takes all place in this, it's the same spot. Maybe just to give us a hint. Uh, what we should keep an eye out for. Hmm. Yeah, that's what everybody would do, right? If you see something chemical, just stick your hand in it. So he was crazy before and he was like... Uh, saying, uh, throw them back into the sea. And now it seems he has changed his mind a bit and wants to investigate it. It's not that afraid anymore. No one else was present. Quicksilver. God in heaven. Yeah, that's a bit of a weird reaction if you ask me. <laughs> Shouldn't he be like, ah, oh, get the thing away from me! And like, screaming and trying to get out. And also, he's in here with the demons. That also should make him feel more uneasy but he just maybe he has just lost it in general so we can already see the flames but they are not just flames this is the same thing that struck the mermaids before even though it didn't kill them that like beam of energy that goes up to the sky and what uh made the crack and leave in the end was um, that they tossed out the shells I suppose which is kind of weird but there, this t chest here has two elements to it there's like that quicksilver on top of it and there was a shell on the bottom drawer so they tossed out the shells, but left the quicksilver. This is like a like really weird alchem alchemical engine of some sorts, which I don't quite get how it works. But we're probably not supposed to understand it. So there's nothing interesting to see through the windows here. Yeah, and that's it. So uh, there are like two different endings, or basically a non-ending where you can just like skip through um, the bargaining bargain chapter. Here, have some tea, Mister. Distant memory, dreadful chapter in our lives. Do not write back. Sure. Oh, by the way, there's a fee waiting for you. And maybe a, a trial or so. I don't even know. Well, I think we got it then. We got through it. Am I satisfied? With everything, yeah, I think I, I kind of am. I can live with the conclusion. 
ominous bad weather brewing outside. Storms everywhere we go. At least a little rain. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure on the timeline. Um, this table belongs to you now. Please finish it. There's a year in between our investigation and then we get this letter back. There's already like one week that passes before that. Hmm. All I can say is that surgeon is a strange man who has strange items and curious interests for occultism and black magic or whatnot. And he sacrificed his monkey and he sends me a monkey's paw, which is like literally uh, a, a voodoo thing, I think, right? That's a, like f for a spell, like zombie, I don't know. I don't even know what, what kind of ritual it, it is for. But it, it is some sort of ingredient. Um... Or like a charm, unluck, unlucky charm, luck charm. Not sure. All right. Well, that was something different. Why not? And who are we, by the way? This is still not clear. We're just the investigator. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, thanks for watching everybody. See ya, bye bye.